Hey everybody, John C. Denise Richards and the lovely Lulu. Welcome back to another All Things Home. We're having a lot of fun today. Today is when this video goes out anyways, is September 29th. And welcome back to another All Things Home. We love chatting with you guys about things that have to do with your home, specifically all things home. All things. And it's going to take a long time for us to actually cover all things. That that does. You Actually, you set the right tone because now we've got lots of material. Lots of material that will probably go on forever. And ever. Because it's all. Things it's a big home. Word. It's a big word. All right, enough about that. We're just cracking ourselves up. We're having a good time. Just excuse us today, all right? Uh, welcome back, though. And we want to go over quite a few things today. So I want to jump in. Um, first of all, I want to mention that today is probably one of my favorite days of the year. Did you know that? I would imagine so. I know whose day it's not. Assad Farak does not like it. No, he does not. If you know Assad, you'll get that inside joke. But today is National International Coffee Day, which I love International Coffee Day because – I don't know if you can see this on camera. I got my coffee here. Oh, well, I love the Cubs too, but uh, we'll not talk about that right now. But this has got my iced coffee in it for the day. I enjoy my iced coffee for the day. Love it. And today is International Coffee Day. So if you enjoy your coffee, quick shout out. What's your favorite coffee that you like to drink? Is it from Starbucks? Is it from, where is it from? Is it from Dunkin' Donuts? Or is it from Randy at Grumpy Goat? We've talked about him oh, a few yeah. times. Got a quick shout out to Randy. He's yeah. awesome. Local brewer here. I say brewer. It's not really a brewer. It's more like, uh, what do they do? They cook them. They're called... Um, you think about that, but he's here in Bonita <laughs> Springs, and they take care of... They roast. Roasters, I yes. we'd get to it in a second. They are Randy roasters. Roast beans. Randy's an awesome guy. So if you want some local, fresh, roasted coffee, not stale, his great coffee, reach out to Randy. Grumpy Goat Grumpy Coffee Goat. in Bonita Springs. Yeah, yeah. Bonita Springs, Florida. Beautiful place. So today is uh, Happy International Coffee Day to all you yeah. coffee lovers out there. And those of you who don't like coffee, I don't like you. So happy International <laughs> Coffee Day. Welcome back. So let's talk about um, last week. We briefly went over eight reasons why a listing isn't selling. And we're not going to go over all eight of those again. But if you want to see the eight list, the reasons why homes typically don't sell, mm -hmm. that's a great video. We covered eight of the top reasons. There's more reasons why homes don't sell, but those were really good that we went over last week. Yeah. If you're a person thinking about selling your home, I would strongly recommend that you look at last week's video. Mm. It will definitely help you get going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if your home's stale and it's been on the market for three or four months and it hasn't sold yet, I think that video will be helpful for them as well, too. I Indeed. think it's about time to fire your agent and find a new one. All right. Uh, why deals fall apart? That is our topic for today. And I didn't I didn't even find an article on this. I just thought, you know what? We've been doing our jobs long enough. We've probably had one or two deals fall apart. So Maybe. we can probably speak about that, right? Yeah. And sometimes um, they are the realtor's fault. Sometimes they are the lender's fault. Sometimes they are the person's fault. There's a lot of reasons why deals fall apart. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today from personal experience, also from what we've seen or heard as mm -hmm. well. So we want to educate people on that because we're not perfect. No. I know people think we are. Yeah. I mean, shocker, as a lender, I see deals fall apart for some different reasons. Yeah. Sometimes a deal is about to fall apart and they reach out to me, who would be their second loan officer, mm. to capture that file, get it going and get mm. it closed because maybe the previous lender wasn't as well versed with that particular credit profile. We yeah. just don't know. We don't know. Um, some lenders wait until the last minute to do some pretty critical things in a file. Um, done after the financing contingency, uh -oh. and that can create a, a, a quite a headache, and the seller or the buyer could lose their earnest money deposit. Yeah. Um, some things that the people do. Yeah. Touch. Oh, oh, my give favorite. One or two of those. Yeah. So they apply for a mortgage. Right. They go under contract, mm. and then they take out a brand new car loan. Uh oh! Don't do that. Or max out their credit cards, or buy new furniture, or make a late payment on something. No bueno. It means no good in Spanish. No, no, no. Yeah, so those are interesting reasons. So really, I think if we break it down into why deals fall apart, we could put it in two categories. One, financing. Mm -hmm. That's one of the top reasons deals fall apart. And underneath, uh-oh, we just lost our light. Let me see if I can fix that. Hang on. Don't go anywhere, everybody. Yeah, Keep hang in there, everybody. <clears throat> Lulu and I can do like, you know, oh, there we go. There's the timer. Uh-oh. Hang on, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Oh, that's horrible. Everybody, welcome back. Sorry, the video messed up. The light went off. We're going to keep rolling. We're going to... True technical difficulties. True technical, we're going to crop these together for you. Anyways, we were talking about the uh, 
financing basically is where a lot of deals can fall apart, right? Yep. And sometimes it's the person's fault. Sometimes it's the person. Sometimes it's the lender. Sometimes mm-hmm. programs change. All kinds of you know different things. Buy, uh, buyers going out and buying cars, what have you. But John, you were really talking about something important too. I was. I do that quite a bit. I talk about important stuff, well, but people don't listen. It's your sometimes. story, John. You can tell it any way you want to. And that's what I do. <laughs> inspections. Inspections. A lot of times deals can fall apart because of inspections. And that's the inspection that's done right after they go under contract, right? That's not the appraisal inspection. Not an appraisal. Different. Different, which is another reason why deals fall apart. But Mm -hmm. typically on an inspection and in my 10 years of selling real estate, I've only had two deals fall apart because of the inspection. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even say really fall apart because one of them, the buyer after the inspection just decided the home wasn't in a condition that they wanted to take it over. Mm-hmm. So they backed out. So it wasn't like it fell apart and it was somebody's fault. The buyer just decided to walk away from the deal. In a contract, there's an inspection period where a buyer can walk away from the deal for any reason that they choose. They can just literally walk away from the contract. Yeah. And it's almost like um, second thought, you know, like, I want to make sure I don't have any second thoughts about going into this purchase. That's right. So that inspection is a big piece of that too. Huge. They got to make sure that the house is exactly like they, they want it. Yep. And that they expected it to be. Sometimes people will have an inspection and these inspectors will look at things that a lot of times the normal home buyer doesn't know to look at, whether it's to look for mold or radon or whether it's to look for just things you can't see, maybe up in the attic, roof leaks, things like that. Or that the roof is attached to the truss. Mm. I had one like that. Did you? The inspector missed it. Uh-oh. Sounds like we need a new inspector. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the... <laughs> yeah, I mean, say. obviously, they weren't working with our inspector, Vic no. Nickel. No. They weren't working with Vic, so that was the or problem. Or Joe, the home pro. Either one. We've got a couple they can pick from. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that's another reason they'll fall apart because of the inspection. Yeah. But typically, when an inspection report comes back, I have never seen a home be perfect. No. Even new construction homes have small There's going to be something. So typically what happens at that point in the process of purchasing a home is there's some negotiation going on mm-hmm. back and forth between the seller and the buyer. Mm-hmm. And typically the buyer will request either those items to be fixed or they'll ask for a credit at closing or a price reduction Correct. or a combination of those mm-hmm. items there. Mm-hmm. So there's always ways to work through it. And hopefully the agent that is hoping, helping you buy or sell your home knows how to negotiate well. Because you can, negotiations aren't done just at the beginning before you go under contract. Some people just think, well, I'm going to negotiate the price, and that's going to be it. But there's a lot of things to negotiate after that. One you mentioned. Yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to say that's an even bigger reason to make sure that you're using a realtor. Don't try to sell your house Mm. by yourself in this market. Mm. That's just a scary option. Because there's a lot of things to negotiate. Mm Mm-hmm. And some people don't know what those are. There's more to negotiate than just the price. And, of course, if you're working a deal and if it does fall apart and you don't have a good contract, you don't have a good realtor helping represent you and it's falling apart, you're going to have money that may end up leaving your pocket, your escrow money that you don't get back. And that's a risk that a little bit too risky for me to, that I would ever want to take. Very risky. Sometimes those escrow deposits are $10,000. Yeah, it's... they can be big chunks. So anyways, yeah, so those are, I would say, primarily the two reasons why a home deal can fall apart. Um, There's other smaller ones that just rarely ever happen, but those are primarily the two, financing and then also the inspection contingency. Now, you did mention the appraisal, right? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned in one of the previous videos, most of the appraisals you're seeing right now are coming back at or above asking price, which is great. But if an appraisal comes below asking price, a buyer can typically, if it's on the right contract, come back out of that deal Mm -hmm. if the appraisal comes back low. Mm -hmm. But again, typically what happens is you're back to the negotiation table with the seller trying to negotiate the price. Right. Same same type of thing as if you'd found something in the inspection that you weren't happy with. Again, it's another negotiation. Got to negotiate. So when you look to hire your realtor, uh, try to get a good feel on whether or not they know what they're doing and they know how to negotiate. Hopefully they've been through a few contracts, mm-hmm. a few purchases, a few sales, and they can guide you down that path. Yeah, make sure they've been in business for a good amount of time. Go to the Florida Department of Professional Regulations website. Look up that license mm-hmm. and see how long they've had it. Yeah. Great idea. Florida's different than any of the other states Florida's in the union. different. We like to call it Freedom State. Different is good. Different's good. Hey, uh, before we're done today, let's talk about our buddy Cliff. Mm. You remember Cliff? Mm-hmm. Cliff's a great guy. Uh, Cliff actually works with First Citizens Bank in Naples, mm. and he helps a lot of businesses set up their checking accounts and different things like that, business mm-hmm. loans, mm-hmm. all that fun stuff. Cliff's a great guy. His last name's Cliff, Cliff Brand, and we'll put his info below. Anything you want to say about Cliff? 
he's just a super guy to, to work with. I mean, he's just super down to earth. He doesn't have that sort of bank mentality. Um, I really like him a lot. And he really specializes too. working with businesses. I do, too. Mm-hmm. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Yeah, so give Cliff a call. If you have a business and you're here in the state of Florida, I think he services everywhere in mm-hmm. Florida. Set up a, a bank account with Cliff. If you don't already have a good relationship with somebody else or you just don't like your bank, move over to Cliff at First Citizens. They are fantastic. I don't know their tagline, but I bet you they got a good tagline. I bet they do. I don't know it, though. Fantastic, fun, I don't know. Anyways, it's been a long day. Hey, uh, thanks for watching this video. We are going to pop up another video down below here so that you can binge watch these as well, too, on all things home. And we appreciate you guys watching. We are actually over 320 subscribers now. We just keep moving up and up and up. So thank you to all of you who watch these videos and share them with your friends and family and subscribe. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that for Lulu. She's tired of you not subscribing. Look at it. She's giving up. She needs you to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. It'll give her some energy. Have a great week. Bye.